This mine been here enough, enough of digging, enough of ruining Mother Earth, enough of ruining the skies, enough of that. I feel for my mom. She fought for her land this time and she's still going. I stand in opposition to this circus. Our earth is being violated. Our very life is being violated. There needs to be a line drawn in the res dirt. The Southwestern United States as we know it is a feat of modern engineering. With some of the fastest growing cities in the country, from Las Vegas to Phoenix to Los Angeles, we've managed to manufacture urban oases in the middle of the desert. But this growth comes at a price. For more than half a century, these cities have drawn a great deal of their energy resources from one place, the Navajo Nation. For the last six decades, the Navajo Nation, the largest Native American reservation, which spans three states, has been mined for its coal reserves, powering much of the Southwest and profiting some of the largest energy companies in the world. But for the people living here, coal has been a mixed blessing. So behind me, as far as the eye can see, are these hills of black, and that's all coal. And it's hard to begin to fathom what it's doing to the environment out here, just kind of laying out in the open. My dad, my mom, everybody used to live. We used to walk up here and we just see everybody working here with a big old dust coal mine, you know, like a dust flying all over the place. People don't even know that there's, you know, they can get to your health or anything like that. And my grandma and everybody used to just say, man, I think they're coming this way. They're, they're gonna keep digging, they're gonna keep digging until they get to my house. Joe Allen grew up here and has seen how the continuous blasting and excavating has devastated the land. How has the environment around here changed since you were young? It seems like everything is just dying out here. Everything, just dying. And is it because of the mine and the coal? I think it's because of the mine, yeah. And everything's being ruined. They don't care about people living on that land. We grew up right here in this area here. And that smoke right there, you can feel all the ashes coming down like, like snow sometime. When, when I was a little kid, and I used to say, hey, Grandma, it's snowing over here. Look at that. And I says, nope, that's all the stuff they burn off the power plant over here. The Four Corners power plant is one of the largest and dirtiest of the 633 coal-fired power plants in the country. It spews toxic mercury emissions into the air and dumps dangerous coal waste into the nearby storage ponds. OK, uh, right here is a pond, the fly ash that they have. That fly ash been sitting there for, it's probably about 30 or 40 years it's been there. That's not safe right there. And they said that some of this stuff will seep into the ground and goes in the water. So it's a pond filled with this ash that has potential toxic chemicals yes. in it. Yes, And it's lying right out here in the open. Mm -hmm. Because the waste sits in unlined pits in the ground, there's very little to stop it from contaminating nearby rivers and drinking water sources. Harmful levels of lead, copper, and mercury have been found in the nearby Chaco River, which flows into the San Juan River Basin. It seems like there were a lot of people living pretty close to the mine and to the plant. Did anybody suffer from any health effects from Yes, that? yes. Asthma, eye problem. Are you concerned Asthma. about it at all? I'm concerned about everything. I'm concerned about that smoke, I'm concerned about that power plant, and I'm concerned about that pond there, and I'm concerned about the land that they ruined and the sky. Why burn this? They got dollar signs on their head. They're saying, hey, we need to get that money. But coal is also the biggest employer on the reservation, where the unemployment rate hovers somewhere between 40 and 60%. So many work at the mines despite the damaging effects on their health. Bill Tabagay worked at the Kayenta mine for 22 years. Now, he has black lung. 
a terminal respiratory illness caused by long-term exposure to coal dust. It seems like coal mining isn't going away anytime soon. How do you feel about your future and the future of others in this community? In 2013, one of the mines on the Navajo Nation threatened to shut down, putting the local economy and nearly a thousand jobs at risk. So the tribe elected to buy the mine to keep it running. All those in favor on this legislation that we're addressing at this time. Leave him. He has a right to stay. He has a right to be here. The decision was a controversial one. Many in the community were angry at tribal leadership for making the purchase. I count the score five to zero. The company is five and the Navajo Nation is zero. You did not let us know this was going to happen. Tribal elder Duane Chiliazi has been one of the most vocal advocates against the purchase of the mine. How has coal affected this community? Coal has been very significant in our community history. The positive impact of coal in terms of the livelihood that it provides is only for a small number of the people. Uh, whereas uh, all of us uh, continue to suffer the, um, the environmental uh, consequences of coal mining and coal burning. What are your thoughts about the purchase of the mine? It was a bad deal. The coal mining company was able to put into the contract that they would not be held liable for any liability past, present, or future, and for them to be free and clear is this uh, stupidity of the highest order. How about the economic future? This purchase was made to secure financial stability, it seems like. Do you think that that's viable in the years to come? The Navajo Nation didn't have uh, $85 million to, to, uh, to write a check for the coal mine purchase. And the arrangement is the company is fronting that money and it still remains a mystery as to what the, the interest rate is on that. It, that's uh, something that, that's so confidential that we still do not know uh, about. Our tribal leadership has been negligent. They have not protected our interests. This isn't the first shady coal dealing for the Navajo Nation. A deal made on Black Mesa, the site of the largest known coal deposit in the country, has haunted the tribe since its signing in the 1950s. A lawyer named John Boyden, appointed by the Bureau of Indian Affairs, set up a deal to open Black Mesa for mining. He also just happened to be on the payroll of the coal company, Peabody Energy, who then set up one of the largest coal strip mining operations in the country. All the coal that was mined was transported in what was the only coal slurry pipeline in the U.S., which used billions of gallons of water a year from Black Mesa's aquifer, the sole drinking water source in the area. Today, Black Mesa is dry. Residents have to travel great distances to water pumps like this one. Mary is filling up for her mother, who lives over an hour away. So is there no water where you live on the Mesa? There's no water. We have to haul water for ourselves, for our animals. How long has there been no water where you live? For years. The slurry line takes so much water with coal going into that pipe. And all the springs, the spring water, they're, they're dried out. It costs us too much. But we're hanging in there. <laughs> I know love is hard. 
I feel for my mom. I know she's getting old. She's she's 92 years old and she's still strong. She fought for her land this time and she's still going. She's a strong, strong lady. Over the past several years, Peabody has tried to expand its mining operations, but a few holdouts stand in their way. Mary's mom, 92-year-old Rena Lane, is one of the last resistors of the expansion on Black Mesa. Rena's been told she's trespassing on her own land, but refuses to back down. When one day her sheep crossed into the contested area, rangers paid her a visit. That's when she had her bone fracture on her collar and they told her that they would to take her to jail and then they, they would not come back and take, take her animals the next day. Do you think this happened because they want you off the land? Over 12,000 people have been displaced since coal mining began on the Navajo Nation, making it one of the largest removals of Native Americans since the 19th century. While there's talk of coal production decreasing, the reality is that it's an energy source we'll be dependent on for decades to come. So for the time being, millions of tons of coal will continue to be extracted and burnt here, providing cheap electricity at a high cost. <laughs> 